Hey, podcasters, are you chomping at the bit to make money from your show? Well, before you dive into monetizing, let's talk about how to navigate the legal maze surrounding podcasting and revenue generation. From sponsorships to merchandising to branded content, we are diving deep into the do's and don'ts of podcast monetization. So grab your notepad. You're going to want to jot down these invaluable tips. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome to another exciting episode of Legit Podcast Pro. I'm your host, Gordon Firemark, the podcast lawyer. And if you have ever asked yourself how you can make your podcast more than just a hobby, well, then today's episode is tailor-made for you. We are about to unpack the multiple avenues for making money through podcasting and the legal checkpoints you'll need to be aware of along the way. So let's not waste another minute and get right into it. Then we're going to talk about ways that podcasters make money. The first question is how? How do I do this? Well, there are a plethora of options. Sponsorships and affiliate marketing are two of the most popular. Sponsorships usually involve a company, absolutely, and uh, uh, you know, a sponsorship involves a business paying you to promote their product or service on your podcast. It's useful because it can provide a steady stream of income, especially if you have a broad or a, or a niche audience that aligns with the sponsor's target market. Now, typically, you will agree on specific talking points or ad scripts and incorporate them into the podcast episode either as pre-roll, mid-roll, or post-roll. Or sometimes it'll be a baked-in advertisement that you just uh, do sort of organically within the content. Now, sponsorships are most effective when you have built up a good big, loyal audience that trusts your opinions and recommendations about products and things uh, you know, associated with what you are uh, talking about on your show. Now, affiliate marketing involves earning commissions by promoting other companies' products. This is a passive income source, meaning you can make money long after that episode airs. You'll share a custom affiliate link or code with your audience, and then whenever makes a, someone makes a purchase using your link, you earn a commission. This is an excellent option when you are discussing products or services that sort of naturally align with your podcast content or your audience's interests. And then another way to make money is to sell your own goods. And this includes merchandise like t-shirts, mugs, or any physical goods that are branded with your podcast name or logo. And this allows you to capitalize on your brand identity and gives your fans a way to support you. And you can use online platforms to handle the selling and the shipping and the inventory. So once you have a loyal following that identifies with your brand, launching merchandise can in fact be a profitable next step. Now, another approach is offering your services or courses, consultancy services, workshops, professional services, or courses based on the expertise that you share through the podcast or otherwise. It can be an avenue for monetization that also establishes you as an authority in your field. And you can promote these services on your show and use the platform to direct your, your customers, your leads, your prospects to a sign-up or a purchase page where they can sign up to buy. <laughs> this is most effective when you've demonstrated your expertise and credibility over a number of episodes or seasons or so on. And then there's premium content. This involves offering exclusive episodes, bonus content, or other perks to subscribers who pay you for access to those bonus items. It provides a direct way for your most dedicated fans to support you. How? Well, you can offer premium content through podcast membership platforms that handle the technical side of things. And then once you have a catalog of episodes and a dedicated listener base, offering this kind of premium content can be a logical next step to deepen audience engagement. And then there's branded content. Now, branded content is a little different from sponsored content. It involves partnering with a company to create entire podcast episodes or maybe segments of an episode that align with both your brand and the company's brand. Essentially, it's a form of sponsored storytelling, but it's a little more intensely associated with one particular brand. This goes beyond the traditional model. It, it provides deeper engagement because it is crafted around the brand's message and delivers value to your audience at the same time. So the, to do this, you partner with a brand, collaborate to produce the episodes or segments that might include interviews with their experts or case studies or deep dives into topics that naturally incorporate that brand's products or services. And it's most effective when you have a strong, engaged audience and have established your own brand identity as well. And it's crucial that any branded content partnership uh, aligns closely with the interests and values that your audience 
uh, has that you and your audience have to ensure that it's an authentic and engaging kind of content. Now, there are legal requirements and restrictions and risks to all of these different styles of monetization. With sponsorships, there's uh, Federal Trade Commission rules, false advertising rules, guidelines that require that you clearly disclose when they're hearing an ad. So, hey, this is brought to you by, or let's break to pay the bills, or something like that. That kind of message can be really important. You've got to disclose that it is, in fact, sponsored content. You have to be truthful and not misleading in any kinds of claims or endorsements that you make about the sponsored product or service. And failing to disclose that sponsorship or making any kind of false or misleading claims could result in legal action by the government against both podcaster and the brand. That could mean fines, penalties, mandated corrective advertising, or even being prohibited from advertising those products and services again. Uh, affiliate marketing has similar rules. Again, false or misleading claims are forbidden, and that means that the nature of the relationship with the brand has to be explained. It's not enough to not say anything. You have to actually say in a clear and conspicuous way that that you might or that you will receive compensation when customers use your affiliate links or or uh, uh, purchase codes. That disclosure has to be in the same medium, closely adjacent to the ad itself. So it's not okay to just do a blanket, we might receive commissions in the introduction or in a footnote at the end of the show notes or something like that. You can't endorse a product that you haven't tried unless you make that fact clear. And if you don't disclose the affiliate relationship or mislead your audience in any way, well, again, there could be legal ramifications. When you're selling your own goods, obviously, you can't infringe on existing copyrights or trademarks, things like that, and everything should be properly licensed. And you want to work with reputable manufacturers and sellers to make sure that the products are are uh, legally created and also that they won't hurt anybody. Ensure that your products comply with consumer protection laws and safety standards, and you want to have good return policies as well. Intellectual property infringement could result in costly legal battles and failure to adhere to those consumer protection laws or safety problems could lead to big fines or even products liability claims if somebody gets hurt. When you're selling your services or courses, again, you need to be transparent about what the course or service offers and what it doesn't offer, what's included in the deal or not. You're entering into a contract with your customers, after all, so you want to be sure that those terms and conditions are very, very clear. On the sales page and in the website terms of use is the best practice approach to this. And you don't want to make any false claims or guarantees about potential outcomes from your service or course. You may even want to include some disclaimers, especially earnings disclaimers if you're showing people how they might make money from something, those kinds of things. Again, false advertising and failing to deliver promised results could lead to refunds at the least or worse, serious legal issues that could really damage your reputation. When you're dealing with that premium content approach, again, specify what's included in the premium content and adhere to the terms of any agreements that are made through the membership platform. Again, be very sure that the terms and conditions are clearly laid out up in the sign-up page and that you're doing things through an established platform. And don't include any third-party unlicensed copyrighted material unless you have explicit permission. And be sure that you deliver what you say you're going to when you say you're going to. And again, exercise the same cautions about your premium content as you would with your publicly available stuff. Watch out for intellectual property, privacy, defamation, and those kinds of concerns. Breaking copyright laws or not delivering on these promises, again, could lead to, lead to real legal action and reputational harm as well. With branded content, like with sponsored and affiliate ads, clear disclosure that it's branded content or sponsored is essential. The content has to align with the brand's guidelines and promises, and you should avoid making unsubstantiated claims about the brand or the products. And choose brand deals carefully to make sure that the brands you do business with are aligned with your existing audience's needs, values, and what have you. Non-disclosure or misleading branded content can result in not just legal ramifications, but really a loss of that audience's trust. And that is, you'll have wasted all your energy building that trust in the first place. So by understanding the legal landscape that surrounds each of these monetization methods, you can better protect yourself from potential legal troubles and focus on what it is you do best, creating great podcast content. So before I wrap up, I just want to invite you to join our Legit Podcast Pro community. It is free 
and it's packed with information to keep you informed and, most importantly, legit. In there, you'll find more content, exclusive trainings, and great conversations with peers and me uh, around the legal and business side of podcasting. So visit LegitPodcastPro.com for more information and to join up with us. So to wrap up, monetizing your podcast involves much more than just setting up a Patreon account or securing a sponsorship deal. You have a responsibility to your listeners, to your sponsors, and to yourself to adhere to legal guidelines. Whether you're opting for sponsorships, affiliate marketing, premium content, brand deals, or selling your own goods and services, keep the law in mind. Do your due diligence, be transparent, and when in doubt, consult with a lawyer and get some good advice. Your path to making money should not lead you to spending money on legal battles. So that's going to be a wrap for today. Remember, we are live every Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So make sure you subscribe, like, and follow us so you never miss an episode. For those who prefer to listen, we are also available wherever you get your podcasts. So until next time, I'm Gordon Firemark, the podcast lawyer, reminding you to stay informed, stay legit, and keep on podcasting. See you next time.